Hurricane Irene. We're praying that God Almighty will help because there's a lot of flooding that is happening and we're just asking the Lord to be merciful and, and just, just bring you through this. Just uh, bring you through this, these challenges that are occurring and that uh, we won't forget you with all of the events of this weekend that led up to this weekend of commemoration of 9-11, remembrance of those horrific events of 10 years ago. It's easy to forget about or put in a lesser category uh, what you're going through, but we're praying for you. We're praying also for protection of our nation uh, during this time uh, that others will not attempt to carry out um, some, some ugly plans that will result in the death of individuals. Uh, we're asking God's hand to be upon uh, each of us and that we will pray as a nation, pray for our president, President needs wisdom like like never before. His advisors are advising him, I believe, illly, ill-advisedly. Uh, I believe his $447 billion uh, job proposal will not stimulate jobs, will not uh, result in a growth in jobs, but it will just continue to put uh, us as a country, as a nation, more and more in debt. So pray for that. Pray that God Almighty will Give him the, the wisdom and the backbone to stand up and do that which is right because our country is spiraling out of control. Not only is it spiraling out of control, but the rest of the world is following suit. So uh, pray, 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 Christian, pray. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 still is true uh, today. Spirit of Marriage Ministry, I want to welcome you to our Friday Bible study. We're in the book of Romans, the 15th chapter, and we're believing God for great things as we to study uh, his great word. We're going to begin and to uh, pick up at the 28th verse and see how far the Lord would have us to be. Before we get before we get into the word of God, we we'll open in prayer and want to believe God for great and impossible things to be done. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you've been good to us, better than we deserve. We're asking, Lord, that you will move upon us. We'll take authority of every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that our hearts will be expectant of a miracle. We're asking, Lord, that you will break through those, those clouds of, of darkness, those stormy clouds, that we may see the ray of hope shining, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I ask, Father, you hand to be upon all of the problems of the flooding that is happening in the East Coast. We pray that for a quick resolution to these problems and those that are going through this these flooding, that supplies that are needed will be, uh, that they will receive the supplies. We ask that your hand to be upon our nation, our country, this weekend, with all the events that are planned. We pray, Father, that there will be no trouble, that there, you, you shut down the plans of, of the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that you will give our president wisdom. He needs it like never before, Father. He needs not only wisdom, but he needs courage. I'm asking, Lord, that you will give it to him in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe you, Father, for great things. Bless us as we study your word. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> amen. 15th chapter of Romans, starting in verse 28. And as always, I'll be reading the expositor's notes in the verses themselves. Paul writes, When therefore I perform this note to take the offerings to Jerusalem, he was committed to doing so, and have sealed to them this fruit. Note, everything the believer does for the Lord is looked at by the Holy Spirit as fruit. If it is done according to the will of God, don't think you can just pull out anything and say, I'm going to do it for the Lord. Cain brought his offering unto the Lord and it wasn't pleasing because it's not what God asked so in order for it to be fruit unto the Lord it must be according to the will of God it must be according to the desires of the Lord uh, it cannot be out of your own machinations your own uh, schemings uh, you can't just take anything so Lord I'm going to give it to you it just does not work like that folks I will come by you into Spain. Note, there is a tradition that Paul, we studied last week, that there is no historical evidence uh, that Paul actually made it to Spain. But here it says there is a tradition that Paul did ultimately go to Spain. But it stated there is no historical or scriptural proof 
that he actually ventured into Spain. 29. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Note, proclaims the fact of great truths held by Paul, actually given to him by Christ, Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, which he wished to give to the Roman church, the church at, at Rome. Paul wanted them to, to hear the truths of this great message of the cross, uh, this great gospel of Jesus Christ. And as a child of God, if your desire is not to, to share this great news of the gospel with others, then you need to go back to the very uh, rudimentary, found, fun, fundamental, foundational tools of the gospel, the ABCs, and that is telling everybody about the one who can change anybody and that is Jesus Christ if you ever cool off in that then it's time to get back to the cross and let me ask you that are listening when is the last time that you shared this gospel with somebody when is the last time that you shared how great God has been in your life I'm not talking about material blessing I'm just talking about knowing that your name is written down in the Lamb book of life we talk about a lot of things that are really unimportant that mean nothing at all. The only thing that matters is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as a Christian, if you say that you are a Christian and there are no evidences in your life that Jesus Christ truly lives on the inside, then you need to go back to the altar and say, Lord, get me back on the right road. Forgive me of venturing off. Because there's a lot of things that could have and should have happened to you. But God's hand has been on your life as you try to go outside of that hedge of protection. Verse 30. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Note, refers to the work of God. Even though the Lord has paid the price on the cross for man's redemption, it is up to us to take the message to the world. Wherever we opportunity presents itself, we should avail ourselves to share the great message of the cross with others. And I'm going to tell you something. Doing the work of God is not a work in which you will be lauded, not a work in which you will be applauded, not a work in which you will be patted on the back by the world, nor by the church. At times it becomes lonely. And you, you, you will find yourself on occasion wondering, Lord, did I miss it? Lord, you, you've got to bring me through. I don't know how I'm going to make it, Lord. I, I know that I'm doing your will, but, but it, it just seems like the mountains are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. God is still in the miracle working business. That devil will ride you and try to convince you otherwise. But I want to let you know, God still got a miracle with your name on it because it came through the cross of Calvary and the Lord Jesus Christ is still on the throne he's still able to do great and mighty things See, we need to believe that we need to receive that and we need to act on it act on it in faith and for the love of the spirit note that he would always be led by the spirit so important that we don't allow our own ideas and thoughts to be the one that guides us and directs us. You know, knowledge is wonderful. Uh, wisdom is wonderful. But knowledge of the Word of God and godly wisdom is something that only can come through the Spirit of God. As He moves on your heart, as He shows you things, as He reveals things to you, as He instructs you, as he breaks you, as he molds you, as he continues to take out things in your life as you allow him and put in things of him so that you resemble less of yourself and more of your heavenly father. And God is going to allow you to go through pressure time that will try your faith, not to destroy you, but to develop you, to show you who you really are leaning on. Anybody can stand up and say praise the Lord when everything is going well, but when all hell has broke loose and you don't know where you're going, where it's coming from, or how it's coming, 
All you got is the Lord to depend upon. But I'm here to tell you, he's more than enough. Praise the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. That you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Note, proclaims the humility of this man and the power of prayer. I was, I was shown prayer in action as a young kid. And that's why prayer is, is so, uh, so much a part of my life even today. I was shown the results of prayer, consistent prayer. Prayer that won't quit. Prayer that, 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 that continues to, to go forth even though it looks negative, even though it looks impossible. Because prayer opens up doors. Prayer moves mouth. And prayer that is anchored in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And my grandmother, I would see her many times as she would pray during some, some difficult times. How she would, would always have that time that she would spend with God. And sometimes we as Christians become so involved in other matters uh, that may or may not be important that we, we kind of put God up on the shelf. And we think that because what we've done in the past is enough. You know, we, we don't have to be consistent. Oh, yes, you do. The Lord said, take up your cross daily and follow him. Meaning that self you must die to self, the me, my, I spirit, each and every day. If as a child of God, the things of God do not excite you, do, do not uh, have a, 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 an amazement to them, they don't, they don't, have, they don't uh, attract you, they, they don't make you salivate at the mouth, spiritually speaking. And something is wrong, folks, because we get all hyped up in things of this world and we become so dried up in the things of God sadly most Christians can tell you about the affairs of this world quicker they can tell you about Matthew, Mark, Luke and John hallelujah hallelujah verse 31 that I may be delivered from them who do not believe in Judea Note, the nation of Israel which had rejected Christ. What a sad indictment. The nation of Israel which had rejected Christ. And that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. Note, concerns the offering for the poor saints in Jerusalem who were in desperate need. Paul wanted this to be used for the needs of the people. But Paul always gave them the gospel of Jesus Christ. I remember this was, this was several years ago, and I was on a, a business trip for my job. And I, was, I flew into San Diego. It was late at night. And um, I, 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 I love an IHOP restaurant. There was a, a, a very, very ugly incident that happened uh, in, I believe, Nevada uh, not too long ago. Uh, where some National Guardsmen were killed, uh, and then the shooter was, was committed suicide uh, outside of an IHOP restaurant. It just shows you the the evil that's in this world. Uh, but uh, I, I would, if whenever I was up late, I would I would venture out to an IHOP restaurant. I, I love the food that they have at an IHOP breakfast any time, day or night. And they make some outstanding, outstanding breakfast meals. I, I mean, it's just hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so it was late at night, and I, after I checked into the hotel, I went out to uh, this IHOP restaurant that I was familiar with, and I ordered uh, ordered my uh, my breakfast. It was about 11:30 at night. I ordered my breakfast, and while I was waiting for it, there was a a group of men that were off to uh, my left and uh, I, I found out that they were there was a, some type of Christian gathering uh, that that they were a part of and the waitress was serving them various drinks beverages and and you know bringing out snacks and food and whatever would have have you and and when when all was said and done and, and they got out from the table I looked over at, and, and they may have tipped more on, their, on the, the bill when they were checking out, I don't know, but when I looked on the table, um, compared to the number of people that she was actually serving, 
uh, the tip was, you know, was, was measly. I mean, measly. And and I I thought that was a shame because sometimes we as Christians we we will pass out of track, and which we should. But we, we, we fail to realize that, that folks have needs and, and we should minister to, when possible, to the physical needs of the individual. And I know we don't have money to give to the whole world and that's not what I'm saying. But when the opportunity presents itself and we can, and the Holy Spirit directs us, shows us that we can. You don't have to have lightning come out of the sky in order for you to do what's right. Hallelujah. And so... I thought that was quite sad, uh, but anyway, when I was finished with my meal, um, I gave a uh, a tip to the waitress that had served me, and uh, and I also uh, asked uh, that a tip be credited to the other waitress who had served all of these other individuals that was so stingy. She, why did you do that? Opportunity. I mean, the lady had been on her feet helping them, and so hallelujah, I was there, glory to God. And not that I'm rich or anything, it's just that I know that she's not getting, you know, a great deal of money, and so praise the Lord. But anyway, God is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God, hallelujah. Verse 32, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God. Note, refers to the fact that it definitely was the will of God for Paul to go to Rome. Praise the Lord. It is so wonderful to know that you're in the will of God. I mean, I have prayed and talked to the Lord uh, incessantly about that uh, because of the things, the storms that, that we've gone through. And I've said, Lord, I said, I, I don't want to miss your will. I said, I, I don't have, we don't have years in order to find out what your will is, God. We, we need to be in your will. We, we need to follow you, Lord. And we've, I've asked, I said, Lord, you have to open up doors. There's nothing wrong with asking God to help you. Whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially. I mean, he's God. Nothing wrong with asking him to help. Asking God to, to make a way. And, and, and the Holy Spirit at times is silent. But many times he will let us, let us know that we are in the will of God even though it may look difficult and stressful and it may look the way may look like it is blocked and it look like there's no help coming the Calvary is not coming or it may it seem like that but God Almighty has said that I will make a way if your faith doesn't fail I'll bring you through hallelujah and may with you be refreshed. Note, reveal that Paul had many friends in Rome, hence the warmness of his statements. He had many, many friends in Rome. Praise the Lord. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to close with this story that happened a few years back. I was in, we were in San Diego, and uh, I, as, as my as my habit is, I, I spend try to spend time in prayer uh, with the Lord uh, every day and in the evening time and as often as I can. Just just being in His presence and talking with Him. But anyway, during my prayer time, the Lord had moved in a very very special way. I mean, it doesn't always happen like this. And some of you that that have talked with God on a regular basis, you know what I'm talking about. It's not always the same. Sometimes, boy, it's like manna from on high. It's like, man, heaven just open up and you just basking and you're doing the backstroke in the blessings. And other times, it's like you finish praying. It's like, man, did I just pray? Because, I mean, it's, it's still there, that weight, that, 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 that uneasiness. I mean, it's still there. But this time, I mean, the waters were flowing. And I headed out uh, to go to, uh, to do some shopping at the naval uh, commissary, which is the equivalent of a supermarket. And I just knew God had something special in store. But when I walked in that store, it was like, hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, it was a blessing down in my soul running through me. And and as I walked the aisles, I was just praying down inside of my spirit. And I, I, I walked through the store and and uh, I kept, I kept wondering, Lord, where, who, Lord, what do you want me to? I, I didn't know, but I knew that His Spirit was there. 
And so I finished my shopping and I headed up to the, the checkout counter and the water started flowing again. The hundred buckets started turning. And I said, Lord, hallelujah. I said, I'm almost finished, Father. I said, I, I don't know. I'm talking to you know, in my spirit. I'm not talking out loud. Folks throw a net over you for doing stuff like that. And so I, I went through the checkout and walked through the doors. And I walked through the door. The Holy Spirit spoke. He said, stop. And I stopped. I said, praise the Lord. And, you know, that's strange to some of you what I just said. The Holy Spirit said and Holy Spirit talked to me. You know, that's strange. It's, it's like, what are you talking about? Well, get into the waters and you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, hey. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. And as I stopped and I was looking around, the Holy Spirit said, See that guy on the phone? Well, he didn't say see that guy on the phone. I'm just trying to put it in my own vernacular. And so I turned and there was a young man on the phone. And he said, just stand. Just wait. And as I was waiting, he, he must have been maybe about, ooh, I'm guessing, maybe about 15 feet maybe or so in front of me on the phone. And at first I couldn't hear his conversation. But then toward the end, I began to hear what he was what he was saying and he was becoming quite agitated because uh, from what I could gather uh, he was asking for for money to from someone because he, he apparently needed gas and he was short and he was asking him to bring uh, if they could bring him some money so that he can get some gas to get to wherever he was headed but the conversation didn't go too well because he said a few explicits cuss words and then slam the receiver the phone down you say why would God send why would God have you there when that man is cussing we're in this world folks but we're not of this world if you're always looking for the pretty people to witness to ain't gonna find them ain't gonna find them many fish out there let the Lord clean them up when he slammed the receiver down the Holy Spirit said go and I walked up behind him while he had his back turned, his head down. And I said, uh, I said, excuse me, I said, uh, Lord told me to give you this. I reached into my pocket and pulled out $20 and gave it to him. And when he turned around and looked at me, a little, he was a little shorter than I was. He was quite surprised. I mean, really surprised. I mean, how would you like to be standing in need and all of a sudden the Lord and send one of his children by your way to be a blessing to you and God doesn't always have to send his children God will send a raven an unsaved heathen to bless his children that's how good God is you say God wouldn't do that you ever get stuck on the side of the road in a snowstorm and a man that got a six pack of beer in the cab of his truck with a shotgun hanging in the window pulls up and say you need some help guarantee you that that ain't no tongue talking child of God right there that's a heathen but bless the Lord God will use them anyway and so when I handed him the twenty dollars I mean he he was just flabbergasted he just he couldn't he, he was stuttering he, he he finally got out can I have your address so I can give it back to you I said look there's no need the Lord impressed this on my heart to do this for you and I'm doing it and you don't owe me anything and he still he couldn't comprehend what was happening. Rather than my try to explain to him about what was going on, I just said, well, praise the Lord, turn around and left. He's still standing there. He said, why would God do that? I, only thing that I can say is that I watered a seed that was planted, or I planted a seed that somebody else will water. And I believe that if that young man's heart remains open to the clarion call of the gospel. When I get the glory, we're going to see one another once again. That's the, that's the God that we serve. He will go to the, to the utmost degree in order to bless you, in order to meet your need. It may seem rough right now. It may seem impossible now. You may be on the verge of pulling the hair out of your head, but God will come through. 
He's an on-time God, as we sang in that song. Praise the Lord. So I can understand verse 33, and Paul closed it out. He said, now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. He is a peace God. A God that gives you sanctifying peace in the midst of all the uncertainty that is in this world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We pray that we said something that has been a blessing and encouragement to you. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please send them to us. POM underscore ministry at yahoo.com. Or go to the web address you see on the screen. Select contact and you can send us an email. If you're in a local area and you don't have a local church where you're attending. Or if you're attending a dead, dry mausoleum. Place where they bury folks at. Where the Spirit of God has not moved isn't moving and can't moving because everybody in there is dead too. Hallelujah. And we invite you to our services. Our service begin at 11 o'clock on Sunday. You can go through again to the web address on the screen. Select POM Italy which is on the left side. It takes you to our main website. There you will have a link for directions. There you will see phone numbers uh, where you can get in touch with us. If you're not a local area, you don't have a local church, we're praying, and I'm not saying that perfunctorily. I truly, truly, truly mean that. We're praying that God will bless you with a place where you can hear the word of God across preaching, across teaching, Jesus loving, Holy Ghost filled church where sinners are saved, believers are baptized in the Holy Spirit, where the Spirit and the power of God falls like rain. Hallelujah. Amen. We love you in Jesus Christ. Have a blessed weekend. Have a blessed remembrance of 9-11 uh, this weekend. And remember, you don't have any problem. You just faith in God and He will do the rest. We love you in Jesus Christ.